Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So since my last video where I have discussed about my postdoc that yes I have joined as a postdoc uh, where I have told you that how I joined where I joined and all those things related to that. So in case if you have not watched that video the link is there in the i button you can watch that video and uh, since then since that time I am getting mails and messages and comments regarding that how to apply for postdoc and what is the correct time to apply for postdoc so many questions are there so i thought of you know summarizing everything in short in a video and uh, just telling you all the things which you need to know before applying for a postdoc okay so i'll be talking about each and every component in detail uh, in the upcoming videos where i'm going to talk about everything which is needed in detail and how you can make that impressive that will be the other video like that will be for the other videos but for here i'm just going to tell you an overview that what exactly you need to know and what exactly you should be aware about and what are the things to be done okay so you should be aware about the whole overview whole process and then we will go into the process one by one and we'll you know try to understand each and everything and try to see that how exactly to be done okay so starting with that what is the exact time or what what time you should start applying for the postdoc so in case if you are in phd uh, and if you are planning to do postdoc okay uh, who should plan for postdoc whether you should go for postdoc or not that i will discuss in a separate video but yeah if you are clear that you want to do postdoc in that case you should start planning or you should start searching for postdoc uh, a little bit near about to when you are about to submit your thesis now uh, when you submit your thesis and when you defend your thesis these are the two events you which are going to be the final events of your phd and uh, during that event there is a gap of around one month or it can be around three four months depending upon case to case uh, scenario okay so uh, yeah so once you submit your thesis you should start searching for the postdoc positions and uh, like you should be done with defending your thesis before joining your postdoc okay so that is what the idea is so anywhere whenever you take a postdoc position or when you apply for a postdoc position and when you get the postdoc position or when you reach for the postdoc position it is somewhere around six months it takes uh, and it can be as early as three four months because there are so many processes involved there is visa process involved there is like application process involved there is evaluation interview so many things are involved so compiling all of them it will be around three four to six months we, uh, will be there since that date you have applied for the postdoc and since the date you are going to join for the postdoc okay so that's why uh, you once you submit your thesis you should start searching for postdoc now where you have to search for postdoc I'll talk about this in very detail, but I'm just telling you a few places like you can search for postdoc on Twitter and on LinkedIn. Uh, and also you can search for the web uh, on the websites of different different institutes. And uh, that's the place where you are going to find the applications or the notifications for intake of postdocs. So in case if a particular institute or a particular lab is uh, ready to take postdocs, they are going to make a notification of that, that they need a particular postdoc and be very careful about it because in those notification they are going to ex, uh, like express or they are going to write down that what expertise they need so there are two types of qualification they need one is minimum uh, like uh, requirement that will be like what exactly minimum thing you should know so this depends upon the skills right if you are an organic chemist uh, or organic synthetic chemist so they are going to ask for the minimum skills like you should be able to synthesize uh, chemicals you should be able to uh, use uh, common uh, instruments like uh, you know you should be able to uh, separate out the uh, you separate out the uh, solutions and so many different uh, like basic things okay and then there is additional uh, like requirements so they can be called as preferred requirements and in that they might ex uh, express the need of some sophisticated instrument handling for example they will ask you that you should be able to handle nmr or you should be able to handle mass spectrum or you should be able to handle x-ray diffractometer x uh, so they can be there can be anything so there are two requirements one is minimum requirement and the other one is uh, preferred requirement so if you fall under minimum requirement you are get ready to go and you can apply for that preferred one is not that's optional okay if you know that that will be giving like they are going to give you additional preference for that and if you don't know it like you still are eligible to apply for that okay so yeah look upon the application and apply for that so uh, the, as I said that you have to search on Twitter, you have to search on LinkedIn, you have to search on the websites of the different institutes. Now of course uh, there are like thousands of institutes uh, like and there are so many places it's very difficult to search for each and every website. 
so uh, the best way you can do is you should look upon people who are working in your similar area of work or people who have cited your work or people who have uh, like if you have published a research paper somebody who has uh, done similar work you can search for that okay and uh, it is also depend it also depends that uh, whether you are going to switch your field after phd or you are going to broaden your field after phd or not so there are many people who stick to the same field if they are if you ha if they have done a certain thing they are going to stick to the same thing and they are going to carry forward it in their postdoc also and there are few people who are going to who plan to broaden their field if they have learned something they now want to do something a little bit in the broader area so i prefer the broader one because now it the scope of learning becomes more and the way how you are going to learn the new skills like it increases right so it is always better to learn few more things rather than just sticking to what you already know so that's how you can search for application then once you apply for it you need few things those are super important and those are the things which you should be ready with okay the first and most important thing is a cv so cv is like your uh, uh, like uh, academic resume you can say where all your basic information your educational information and the stuffs related to that will be there uh, it will also uh, include like what work you have done what instruments you know, you know and uh, what are the what are the uh, like uh, areas which which you have uh, already explored during your phd it also includes list of your publication okay although uh, that can be also asked separately so the second thing which they are going to ask is a cover letter now the cover letter is like a summary of your research work it basically tells you uh, it basically tells the other person that what you have done throughout your phd in a short uh, paragraph you can say or in a short a way in a brief way it's not a single paragraph it is like more than one paragraph i'll talk about those things in detail okay don't worry about that but yeah a cover letter should include that what you have worked what motivated you to work in that particular field what you have worked upon that how that is that has helped to the scientific community and why exactly you want to join that particular lab and how whatever you have studied or whatever you have worked during your phd how that thing is going to help to the uh, to, to the place where you are going to join as a postdoc okay so that's how your uh, cover letter will be made uh, the third thing which is important is your research proposal now research proposal is optional some places they want a research proposal some places they don't need a research proposal but yeah in many places where you are applying for a fellowship program for example if you are applying for jsps fellowship or if you are applying for a marie curie fellowship in that case they will need a research proposal also so that thing i'll discuss in a separate video like how you can apply for these fellowships okay J jsps and marie curie that's a separate uh, video and that will take a lot of uh, you know steps and everything so i'll discuss about that don't worry about it yeah the fourth thing which they are going to need they might ask you separately to tell the list of publication uh, sometimes in the application portal itself they ask you to fill the player fill the list of your publication so yeah that's the fourth thing and the last and the most important thing is references okay so they are going to ask for either two or three references minimum two maximum three that's what in most of the applications they want as uh, the number of app, uh, references what is references references are the people from the scientific community to which that institute or that lab can contact in order to get your information in order to get verified whatever you have said in the uh, during your interview or during your uh, like in your cover letter and all okay so that's what it is generally your supervisor is one of the references uh, it depends sometimes you can skip that also but uh, you should have one of the references as your supervisor and apart from that you should choose two more references now it depends the other two references to you it can be anybody if, uh, in your same institute or it can be someone from the other institute the one who knows you and the one if they get an email from the uh, from the institute we are applying for the postdoc if they get an email or if they get notified they should be able to verify your detail and also whenever you are putting somebody's name in the list of references or in the list of referees you should specify that person you should tell that person that i want to make you uh, i want to uh, like give your name as a referee so that that person should be ready for the emails and all okay yeah so these are the things which are required so once you apply for the postdoc uh, if your uh, cv uh, that is the first thing which they are going to look upon so if your cv is impressive your cover letter is uh, you know impressive 
they are going to intimate you they are going to mail you regarding a uh, interview generally they con conduct an interview it can be one or it can be multiple interviews uh, more than one uh, just like it happened in my case but yeah it depends okay so in order to evaluate the students or in order to evaluate postdocs they are going to conduct interview and if let's say after one interview they are they have two or three candidates who are seem to they, they seem to be in, uh, eligible for them they're going to conduct one more interview to you know take out the best from them so ready for the get ready for the interview uh, if you are getting a call for an interview so yeah so after your application you are going to follow up with an interview and then after the interview once everything goes well if they just give you a green signal that yes yes we are taking you as a postdoc then all the official work starts they are going to give you documents they are going to send you basically documents uh, related to uh, like uh, the, your offer letter will be there then depending upon the place where you have applied if you have applied in USA they are going to give you different certificates which are going to be used to get the visa uh, if you have applied in Europe the certificates are different the documents are different so depending upon place to place these documents vary but yeah these documents will be useful to get a visa so now you have to start getting the into the process of getting a visa as early as possible uh, get the visa done and once uh, you are done with the visa book your flight and then reach out to the place where you want to do postdoc so i have just made this video in a very very brief because i just wanted to keep everything in short and i wanted to make you guys know about that what exactly the whole process is in a brief way uh, now of course every step is important and every step has uh, you know a way of doing it so that I will be discussing in detail in coming videos uh, for PhD students also this is going to be helpful because they are also going to write down a research proposal they are also going to write down uh, make a CV so these things are going to be useful for them so yes I'm going to cover them in the upcoming videos how to make these things in detail if you have any other question which is general or generic you can ask in the comment section below i'll try to make a faq video where i'll be taking all your questions which you have asked in the videos in the comment section of the videos and i'll try to include them in that particular faq video and so that you get answered by that okay so that's all from my side for this particular video i hope you understood the whole process from applying for a postdoc to reaching out to the place and starting your postdoc uh, it's it was a brief overview of it but yes uh, the each and every process is important okay even for the applying process like how you can apply for it that is also a, a very tedious thing actually so i'll be making a different video a separate video on that that how what is the best way or what is the correct way of applying for it and how you can reach out one thing which i missed out is also like uh, the writing of email to a particular lab so as i said there are ways of applying to the uh, like there are ways to reaching out to the pe person for postdoc as i said that you have to also look upon the institutes whether they have a notification or not so if you are going through the portal that's fine but if you are reaching out to a person and asking him or her that i want to do postdoc if you have a postdoc position under you i'm ready to work for that you have to write a mail so there is a correct way of writing that mail also i'll be discussing about that as well in the coming videos okay so that's all from my side for this video thank you so much for watching and uh, see you guys in the next one take care bye bye and stay safe